in this episode is particularly for people who are either happy or unhappy with where they're at with a particular aspect of their life and they want to shift it in some positive way. The subconscious and conscious mind interact with nature around us and within us. Today's discussion reveals how we can optimize our brains. Neuroplasticity is this incredible feature of our nervous system that allows it to change itself even in ways that we consciously decide. Now that's an incredible property. Our liver can't decide to just change itself. Our spleen can't decide to just change itself through conscious thought. It's our nervous system that harbors this incredible ability to direct its own changes in ways that will serve us better. While we are going to talk about science, and as always, we will delve into mechanism, today's episode is really geared toward answering your most common questions about how to leverage neuroplasticity. Plasticity is not the goal. Plasticity is never the goal. Plasticity is simply a state or a capacity for our nervous system to change. So nothing makes me more frustrated than when I hear, oh, you know, this pill, this potion, this practice, it gives you plasticity. Plasticity is just change. The real question is, what are you trying to change? And specifically, what end goal are you trying to achieve? It's the first step in what we call optimizing your brain. The goal is to figure out how to access plasticity and then to direct that plasticity toward particular goals or changes that you would like to achieve. When we do certain forms of exercise, there's a hormone-like molecule that's released into the blood bloodstream called osteocalcin. Osteocalcin um, is known to provide support to neurons in a brain area called the hippocampus, which is involved in learning and memory. The 150 to 180 minutes of zone two cardio per week will support overall brain health and function by way of improving blood flow. So a lot of cognitive dysfunction is um, over time and, and age related dementia is just poor perfusion of the brain. This is why people who have general cardiovascular issues also generally have issues with thinking. Quite honestly, sleep apnea is also a major problem. Fix sleep apnea by taping your mouth shut and becoming a nose breather at night. That's the best way. Now, in terms of brain function, one of the, the ways to improve cognitive function is to make sure that there's a, appropriate amounts of lymphatic clearance. The brain has its own lymphatic system. This lymphatic clearance happens during sleep. One way to enhance it is to have the feet slightly elevated, 10 to 15 degrees. I put a pillow under my ankles when I sleep at night. Usually in the middle of the night, I realize I kicked it away or something like that. But feet elevated naps of about 10 to 15 degrees are very useful. It increases the glymphatic clearance. There's beautiful data to support um, glymphatic clearance as an important process. Exercise during the day increases the rates of glymphatic clearance at night. So the reason I mention this is that these are indirect effects on glymphatic clearance and blood flow. Direct effects of exercise on brain function and health actually come from stimulation of the skeleton and load bearing exercise. And this is something that I think is underappreciated. Why would the brain continue to support its own function if the body isn't being used? So this can be achieved a number of different ways. I actually think body weight exercises can be quite good. My first meal is almost always a low carb meal. It's some steak or ground beef, some Brazil nuts, maybe a vegetable, but I do have more mental clarity when I'm low carbohydrate, provided that I my glycogen stores have been repacked from the previous day or so. So a low carbohydrate meal in the midday for me is best because then I don't get that dip, that crash. A mental clarity comes easy. Remaining curious, genuinely curious. And I define curiosity as being interested in something without being attached to the outcome, right? You legitimately want to find out what's on the other side, that that maintains this youthfulness and this plasticity. Mm. And I think when one approaches a conversation of any kind from the stance of, I don't want to find out, I want to be shown to be right. Yeah. Curiosity is dead. 